How's life everyone? Today is Monday, that means another episode of the Wine Science Commentary. My name is Lawrence and as always I've prepared a highly interesting topic for you. Reductive winemaking versus traditional winemaking. Where are the differences? Where are the similarities? What is best for your wine? We will find out and as always if you like the kind of content then you might want to consider subscribing to the channel. That's it. From my side I would say let's do it. This week's paper is called Comparison of Traditional and Reductive Winemaking Influence on Some Fixed Components and Sensorial Characteristics. Published back in 2010 in the European Journal of Food Research and Technology and head researcher was Andrea Antonelli, this guy here, very Italian looking. Um, is working since 20 years as a professor at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia. He teaches the Enology classes as it um, stands here. And before that he worked at the University of Bologna where he also got his PhD. And then down here you see his interests, Barilla Group. So he's very fond of pasta as it seems. <laughs> Barilla of course is the the number one producer of pasta in the world. Um, introduction guys. The new trend of the market for white wines is currently addressed to full bodied and aromatic products. This tendency makes the research to turn to techniques able to enhance flavor and extract of white wines. For this reason, a more care to prevent phenolic oxidation and to improve aroma content is required. Of course, we're talking about reductive winemaking here, my friends. Considering the whole winemaking process, the most insidious step is grape crushing. During this phase, the rate of oxygen consumption can be very high. The presence of grape polyphenol oxidases make polyphenol oxidation extremely fast. And I'm going to show you this slide very, very, very shortly. Um, what is this here? Why I'm showing you this? Because I just mentioned polyphenol oxidases and this is exactly what is shown here. So we have cafeteric acid, which is a hydroxycinamic acid which is of course a phenolic acid and this can react in the presence of oxygen and PPO to a so-called kinon. So PPO occurs naturally in the grape tissue in the vacuole. Yeah, it's an enzyme also known as tyrosinase and in presence of O2 and a substrate cafeteric acid a so-called kinon is produced and these kinons are very powerful in oxidizing other substances in the wine such as thiols for instance. So kinons could lead to a depletion of thiols meaning you lose aromatic intensity in your wine and also kinons can react with other phenols in your wine okay and this leads to a so-called browning or yellowing of your wine yeah? and in winemaking we can use certain additives that either avoid this step to happen, okay, or this step to happen. So we could add SO2, ascorbic acid, tannins, or glutathione to fixate some of this oxygen or to bind onto the kinon, okay. So this is the, yeah, the objective why we want to use reductive winemaking, of course. And now, I'm going to show you what they actually conducted here in this research. So material methods. They used two cultivars in an industrial scale. So per treatment 4.5 tons for each cultivar. They used Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc is of course extremely aromatic intense and they used Trebbiano Romagnolo which is fairly neutral so very yeah, low in flavor just as all the other Italian whites. Um, and then they used two different wine making protocols for each cultivar. Okay, so the tra traditional wine making um, included the pressing, and then a racking with bentonite and gelatine addition. Then the fermentation was started with commercial yeast and the addition of some nitrogen. And after fermentation was completed, they racked the ferment, they filtered it, they bottled it under screw cap. And actually, the reductive wine making was quite similar but the whole winemaking was done under an inert atmosphere so under nitrogen I think they used and also prior to fermentation they added SO2 80 milligrams per kilo and ascorbic acid 160 gram 160 milligram per kilo on top of the grapes okay as um, antioxidant 
so to speak. And then if they would for instance wreck a wine into a tank or the must, then they would gas up the tank so you have an exclusion of oxygen. And then I'm going to show you some results now down here. So table 3 shows you the comparison between the different winemaking techniques. So TW stands for traditional winemaking and then RW for productive winemaking of course. So they compared the two mean values of the two um, different winemaking protocols. And you can see first of all that the basic wine chemistry was quite unaffected by either of the treatments. So alcohol, no significance, also um, tritreable acidity, tartaric acid. So the, the basic chemistry didn't change. Where it starts to get interesting is further down here. So let's look at ascorbic acid. Of course, as I just mentioned, um, we added or they added ascorbic acid on top of the grapes in the reductive winemaking um, yeah, protocol. So that means you end up with a higher level of ascorbic acid in the finished wine compared to the traditional winemaking where they didn't add anything. Now, they added 160, 160 milligrams per liter of ascorbic acid and in the wine it only remains 4.11 milligrams per liter. So ascorbic acid was quite diminished, meaning it was quite successful in reacting with oxygen, oxygen for instance. So ascorbic acid and oxygen, they react to dehydroascorbic acid, but you also find some ascorbic acid, of course, in the treatment when non-ascorbic acid was added because vitamin C is, of course, also a component of every fruit, such as the grape, for instance. And then down here, you see the optical density values, 420 nanometers, 320 nanometers and 280 and you see you have the highest value in of course the reductive winemaking why is that because you have more phenols here okay compared to the traditional winemaking as you know if you include oxygen in a traditional winemaking process then this leads to uh, polymerization of your phenols which then precipitate okay and this oxidation of phenols does not happen in a, a reductive winemaking atmosphere so you end up with higher total phenol content in the end here and 420 nanometers is the measurement of yellow color and you see the yellow color is a bit higher in the traditional and the reductive winemaking treatment sorry because of course you have higher total phenol amount here then this is what I showed you before on the other slide tartaric acid was quite diminished in the traditional winemaking protocol here means that this step was obviously happening or happened because you have less cafeteric acid in the traditional winemaking means that cafeteric acid reacted to the alkynon okay and it seems that cafeteric acid was quite unaffected in the in the reductive winemaking protocol here so far so good let's have a quick look at this table here. So this table just um, shows the interaction between grape cultivars and winemaking techniques for the respective treatments and varieties. So you see volatile acidity was not significant for each for any treatment or any variety. And you might ask yourself why I'm showing you this because a lot of people might say that you need in some certain steps of your winemaking you need some inclusion of oxygen otherwise um, your yeast gets stressed very much thus you have a sluggish fermentation thus you have a, a formation of volatile acidity but here as it seems ferments were not stressed at all in the reductive winemaking atmosphere here um, and you yeah ferments were not affected that's what I wanted to show you here and then down here, PCA, so principal component analysis. You see that the reductive winemaking and the traditional winemaking, yeah, they were for each variety quite in distance from each other, meaning that every variety and every um, winemaking treatment produce quite different wines. Okay, and you see, for instance that here Trebbiano traditional winemaking to Trebbiano reductive winemaking the gap is quite large meaning the wines were quite different due to this different winemaking methods 
whereas the gap in the Sauvignon Blanc is smaller, meaning these wines were more similar than the Trebbiano ones. So it seems that if you use reductive winemaking on a neutral variety, then this creates a more different wine, okay? Because the gap, as you see here, is more extended than here. Then, at the end, when they bottled the wines, they gave those wines to a panel, which then evaluated the wines. And it says here that, moreover, not trained judges preferred reductive winemaking wines in both cases. 20 out of 26 preferences for Trebbiano Romagnolo and 21 out of 26 preferences for Sauvignon Blanc reductive winemaking wines. For these reasons, sensory evaluation as well as chemical analysis confirms that reductive winemaking is a real opportunity to diversify and enhance the number of, product, of products obtainable from a single cultivar. In conclusion, these results are very encouraging for further studies and applications of this technique. Okay guys, that was our paper. Quite short, but quite interesting actually. Like, I like the, the short papers. Um, what we see here is, if you use reductive winemaking or traditional winemaking, you end up with two different wines. And what you should also take into consideration is that the panel, especially the you know the untrained panel or the non-experts preferred all the reductive winemaking wines okay and then one thing to add here is that if you use reductive winemaking throughout you know your whole process then make sure that you exclude your oxygen as much as possible because these wines tend to be very instable okay because you didn't precipitate all these unstable phenols and that could happen on the bottle so for sure use a screw cap and so on and so forth um that's it from my side i hope you liked the paper that was the weekly episode of the wine science commentary guys i hope you enjoyed it i hope you liked it if so then hit the subscribe button down below and next week we'll look at filtration does that actually harm your wine yes or no we'll find out see you next monday thanks for tuning in stay safe stay hydrated